This is our final presentation by the next leaders. Our objective is to describe and analyze the management concepts learned throughout the course by applying them to a storyline or plot developed throughout the semester. To accomplish this, we will produce a TV show and booklet called Finger Puppet Management using course topics and themes to display our understanding of these management concepts. Our target market includes students and professionals seeking an introduction or overview of management. The premise of our show was developed from the Mitzburg paper, The Manager's Job, Folklore and Fact. The folklore that grabbed our attention was, the effective manager has no regular duties to perform. This is a misconception, and Mitzberg pointed out this in his paper, where individuals believe that a manager's role is that of an orchestrator or a puppet master pulling strings. To disprove this concept, We've illustrated the diverse managerial roles through our TV show. Our characters will debunk this folklore and highlight the regular duties of an effective manager. To do so, we've used Mintzberg topology of managerial roles, which describes both the interpersonal, informational, and decisional roles that a manager plays within an organization. And these roles can change from one day to the next depending on the manager's task. After regional conference, the Softec Designs decides to update their computer systems so they can reach a broader audience and attract new customers. The system would allow the company to offer superior products to their customers as well as maximizing profits and decrease expenses. The main idea of our show is to illustrate the different roles and challenges that managers face. The two managers use different management styles to navigate the implementation of the new technology. While navigating these changes, the managers encounter ethical dilemma among their teams that they must work together to resolve. Moreover, we will use good and bad management attributes to show effective managerial methods that were implemented. We would cover the examples of real-life scenarios that will unfold as each team works to address a problem or go after an opportunity. While attending a company-wide conference, team leads Mel and Sharon from the St. Petersburg office learn about the new technology the company will be implementing. After learning about the new technology, Mel and Sharon plan their respective methods for implementing the new technology. Mel. The leader of Team A decides to use the SWOT methodology that will help her to analyze the regional position of the company so she can best formulate an action plan. Mel plans to work with her team to assess the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats within the company. While Sharon, the leader of Team B, prefers a different approach to managing the implementation of the new technology. Sharon decides to focus on the company's strategic objectives to better determine how she will formulate a plan to implement the new technology. Bob is the Southern Regional Manager, and the team leads Mel and Sharon report directly to him. Bob embodies strong entrepreneurial, interpersonal, and leadership skills. Mel considers Bob to be a role model, and she hopes to one day advance into a position such as his. Mel is the team lead of Team A. She is fair, approachable, and a supportive manager that leads by example. She takes pride in her work and is conscientious about her interpersonal, informational, and decision-making roles of her job. Mel pioneers open communication with her team and is accepting of open feedback. Shay performs her job well, however, she misses a lot of work. Shay's goal is to be a manager one day, thus she takes on extra responsibilities. She works well with others and stays up to date with company policies. Shay is a strong T player, but exercises poor judgment. Joy is very technical and analytical. She prefers to work alone and she has no managerial aspirations. Joy struggles with the team-based environment and finds negotiation to be challenging, even though she has excellent ideas. 
Sharon is the team lead of Team B. She is an authoritative manager. She lacks the interpersonal and conceptual skills needed to connect with her team effectively. She is ethnocentric and views her team as her tools to success and nothing more. Sharon's do-as-I-say approach is reflected in the level of unhappiness and high turnover rate in her team. Sharon is selectively perceptive, communicates poorly, and uses pressure to influence her team's behavior. Joe is the subject matter expert. He has a difficult time communicating and works tirelessly to earn Sharon's approval. He's interested in leadership, but he lacks the personal skills necessary. Thus, he is not taken seriously by his peers. This has discouraged Joe, and he is ultimately dissatisfied with his job. Jane is unhappy with her job. She contributes minimal effort and constantly tries to find ways to manipulate the system. Jane defies authority and has questionable morals. She is a student and is interested in management. However, she is unwilling to commit to the hard work it takes to get into a higher position. Next up, you will find out how we executed our show. In our second episode of The Disturbance Handler, our first management concept demonstrated was standard operating procedures. Standard operating procedures indicate that a step-by-step -step system is in place to facilitate business operations. We demonstrated this through the standard operating procedure for employee termination and how a lack of documentation made it difficult to fire Jane without violating the standard operating procedure. This ties in with another concept, ethical dilemmas, in which one of the team leads, Sharon, had to weigh the moral imperatives of either keeping or firing Jane based on her actions. We then used the universal approach concept to illustrate Mill's opinion on this ethical dilemma. Using the universal approach, Mill believes that the right decision should be applicable in all situations for all people, and therefore, Jane should be fired. We wanted to contrast Mill's belief with Sharon's by using the utilitarian approach, which states that the best course of action is the one that causes the greatest benefit. Using this approach, Sharon believes it is better in the long run to keep Jane for the system changes. We demonstrated the next concept, the moral intensity factor, when Sharon determined the magnitude of the consequences, the social impact, the concentration of effect, and the temporal immediacy and proximity to dictate the punishment. We decided that the outcome that would best illustrate our combined management concepts would be to keep Jane or put her on a corrective action plan. To showcase the process of using the moral intensity factor, we decided that the concentration of effect step would dictate that Sharon should not fire Jane because of the disadvantage it would place the team in. To display the dichotomy between management styles, we decided to explore concepts from both episodes 3 and 4, the disseminator and the figurehead. In the disseminator episode, Mel starts out by using the bounded rationality model to define the problem that is the implementation. The optimum solution according to the bounded rationality model would be the best approach. In this instance, that would be team-based brainstorming and participative decision making. However, Mel had to satisfy, that is, choose the minimum criterion or a lower objective because Sharon wanted to work independently. Heuristics and analysis techniques showed that the proposed system changes would greatly impact the employees, and research shows participation clarifies expectations, increases performance, and influences group behavior. As a result, Mel assigned individual tasks to all team members. The classical decision-making model shows that the low-involvement approach would enlist employee opinion but reduce barriers to change if the employees helped by providing suggestions while leaving final decisions to the team leads. Both decision-making models have advantages and disadvantages and Mal utilized the best approaches from both models. Moving into the planning phase, she used the SWOT analysis to assess the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats to the implementation. The SWOT analysis can also be used to assess both the internal and external environment. She also used her managerial network, a concept mentioned in the Mintzberg fact and folklore paper, along with benchmarking, to gain information from previous companies who implemented similar changes. 
The creation of bi-weekly bi team meetings was a way to communicate progress and answer questions from her team. This allowed her to evaluate their understanding of their task while providing feedback, which is a perfect example of the feedback loop. However, Mel failed to create a contingency plan. Sharon developed these strategic objectives to set the long-term goals for the organization. However, she created these objectives without any consultation or outside information. Joe and Jane were overwhelmed because Sharon delegated all the planning to them, but she did not appropriate tasks based on their skill set. To obtain participation from Joan, Sharon used a pricing, an influence tactic, by promising Joe a promotion. Barriers to change seen in this episode include lack of information, ambiguous instructions, task conflict because of unclear priorities, and a lack of motivation. Not surprisingly, Joe and Jane failed at their task. Here we can see that the different approaches used by both managers determined whether they were successful or failed in their efforts at planning. There are many management concepts that can be learned throughout this course. The types of managers in the workforce varies and each manager uses their own techniques. Some managers strategically plan and include employees while others are authoritative and make decisions on their own. Management can be found everywhere in the marketplace, and good management is vital to a manager's success in the competitive economy. Our TV show portrays proven management techniques guaranteed to ensure success. A manager who consults with their employees, provides feedback, sets strategic and tactical objectives, and implements plans effectively will likely be successful. However, a manager who constantly delegates work, makes decisions on their own regardless of knowledge, lacks priorities and struggles with implementation will likely be unsuccessful. Technology is a major theme throughout our show. It affects both the internal and external environment along with the company's products and processes. As an external force, it requires the organization to respond. Internally, it changes the business strategy as well as the organizational structure. We saw both managers creating strategic and tactical objectives to enable a smooth implementation. The organizational structure became flatter when Mel got promoted and Sharon became the lead for both teams. The concept of empowerment was illustrated when Bob gave the team an opportunity to complete the planning, but it also showed that the organization is decentralized because decision making is pushed down. Concepts like unity of command and clear lines of authority is evident in the team structure where team members report to their respective managers and any decision regarding their work or conduct falls directly to their team leads and no one else. Mel and Sharon are interdependent within their roles because their output is collective. However, it was clear that they thought about and approached the planning and decision making differently portraying cognitive differentiation, which presented collaboration and integration challenges. To surmise, both managers would have been more efficient and effective had they collaborated on the assignment. They would have made better use of their resources, learned from and build on each other's ideas while building consensus. Interpersonal and intrapersonal barriers affected their perception and interpretation of their tasks. Sharon perceived the changes as a way to gain personal rewards and more positional power. She was motivated by individual need, experience, and personal preferences. Poor communication and conceptual skills affected the way she disseminated information and instructions to her team. As for Mel, her strong conceptual skills were a clear indicator of her effectiveness, which was later confirmed by her promotion. Other leadership qualities seen throughout the show includes cognitive intelligence, portrayed by Mel's self-awareness and self-regulation. 
She's empathetic to the needs of her team and socially intelligent as she modifies her behavior based on the social situation. She uses positional power to evaluate and provide feedback to her team and assign tasks that improve their skills. Bob, the entrepreneur, actively explores new opportunities while making routine decisions. He has both legitimate and rewards personal powers and shares his power through empowerment. He uses formal authority to measure performance and direct future actions of his team. The magnitude of his personal powers is demonstrated by his well sought after knowledge and expertise in management. It is clear that there are many parallels between Bob's and Mel's leadership, which is not surprising since Mel admires and emulates Bob.